I re-recorded episodes one through six and I'm releasing them as a single video. If you heard them when they first came out, you know why. Anyways, here they are. Next glitch. I was at home, lounging on the couch and scrolling through my phone when I heard the front door open. I looked up, expecting to see my roommate, and sure enough, it was him. He gave me a dismissive, hi, and headed straight upstairs. I figured he'd had a long day and didn't think much of it. About twenty minutes later, the front door opened again, and in walked my roommate. Again. I was confused and asked him why he'd left and come back. He looked at me like I was the one being weird and said, What are you talking about? I just got home. I told him about the earlier high, and how he'd gone upstairs, and his face went pale. Why did you let a stranger go upstairs? He yelled. We both panicked thinking there was an intruder in the house. We grabbed anything we could find to defend ourselves and cautiously made our way upstairs, fully expecting to find someone there. But there was no one there. We searched the entire floor, even checking under beds and in closets, but found no evidence that anyone other than us had been there. My roommate is still freaked out about the thought of someone being in the house and I can't shake the vivid image of him walking up the stairs, even though it apparently never happened. Next glitch. When I was about ten and my little brother was five, we used to sit on the porch with our dad, looking at the stars and the moon. Dad would often fall asleep in his chair, while my brother and I made up stories about what we saw in the sky. One night something really bizarre happened. We were staring at the moon when it suddenly started shaking, like it was wobbling back and forth in the sky. My little brother got scared, and to be frank, I did too. I remember shaking my dad, trying to wake him up to see it. He opened his eyes and looked up, but he was half asleep and didn't seem to understand what was going on. He just mumbled something like, It's probably just the wind, and drifted back to sleep. By the time he woke up properly, the moon had stopped shaking and he laughed it off as our wild imaginations. Years later I asked my dad about it and he said he kind of remembers something strange about the moon that night, but isn't sure if it was a dream or reality. He was so sleepy that he can't really confirm what happened. My brother still remembers it though not in great detail since he was so young. Next glitch. I like to run at night. I bring my phone with me for music and safety. One night, I was running in the park near my house. Out of nowhere, my phone started going crazy. The screen was blinking and switching between apps really fast. The flashlight was flashing on and off, and instead of music, there was a loud static noise. I stopped running to look at my phone. As I was trying to figure out what was happening, there was a loud crash. A huge tree had fallen down right in front of me, on the path where I would have been if I hadn't stopped because of my phone. As soon as the tree fell, my phone went back to normal. The screen stopped flashing. The flashlight turned off and my music started playing again. It was like nothing had happened. Next glitch. I've been living in my house for over a decade now. The front door leads to the living room while the back door opens into the kitchen. Everything was normal until this strange day a few weeks back. After a long day at work, I came home particularly exhausted. I unlocked the front door, and as I stepped inside, I felt this strange sensation. It was like I was falling, or something like vertigo, I guess. The feeling passed after maybe one second, and when I steadied myself, I was standing in the kitchen, with my back to the other door. But I just entered through the front door, which leads to the living room, not the kitchen. I was freaked out, but I tried to shake it off, blaming it on my tiredness and thought maybe while I was experiencing vertigo, I stumbled over to the other door. 
The strangeness didn't end there, though. That night, the lights started turning on and off by themselves, just like in a horror movie. I checked everything, the fuses, switches, bulbs, but couldn't find anything wrong. After half an hour, everything went back to normal and nothing strange has happened since. I used the back door for a few days because I didn't want to feel that sensation again if I used the front door. But at some point last week, I forced myself to use the front door and guess what? Nothing happened. Now I've even started questioning if I didn't dream the whole thing up. Next glitch. Two weeks ago, I was at a photography exhibition and I bumped into the editor of a renowned travel magazine. He appreciated my work and offered me a project on the spot. I want to say it was unexpected, but it happens to me a lot. I must be lucky. The subject of the assignment was a small, off the beaten path town named Kerwood which he described as radiating rustic charm. So yes, perfect for a travel magazine. Unfortunately, my phone had run out of battery at the time, so he wrote down the name of the town on a napkin, which I put in my pocket for reference. When I got home and plugged in my phone, I retrieved the napkin and typed Kerwood into the map app to examine the location and plan my journey. I was taken aback when I noticed a pin already dropped at Kerwood in the app. The pin was labeled Photography, Rustic Charm with Jenny. WTF, I'd never heard of Kerwood until that evening, and I had no clue who Jenny was. I checked through my phone, messages, emails, call logs, looking for any mention of Kerwood or Jenny. Because, you know, sometimes the apps can pick up keywords for messages and such. But there was nothing. The specificity of the map label gave me the chills. How could it know I wanted to go there, and the words rustic charms were the exact ones the editor used? Despite the unnerving mystery, I of course carry out the assignment. Upon reaching Kerwood, which was as charming as the editor had described, I met the assistant on the project. Her name was Jenny. When she told me her name, I blanked for a second and considered telling her about the map label but I decided against it, thinking she'd think I was crazy. So that was my glitch story. Not spooky, but definitely mind-boggling. It leaves me wondering whether technology has advanced to an unimaginable extent, or if I had a brief encounter with a bug in the Matrix. The label on the pin was just too freaking accurate, mirroring the conversation I had with the editor and predicting my encounter with Jenny. Next glitch. When I moved into my current neighborhood six years ago, I exchanged phone numbers with my next door neighbor, Mrs. Parker, as a safety precaution. She was an elderly woman who lived alone. Our interactions remained limited to courteous greetings and the occasional neighborhood chit chat. Over the years, due to various reasons, I had to change my phone number a couple of times. I never updated Mrs. Parker with the new numbers considering our limited interaction. One evening I was at home and my phone rang. To my surprise it was Mrs. Parker on the other end, her voice tinged with panic. She told me she saw flames and smoke coming from my house. I dropped the phone and ran into the hallway, met with a wall of smoke and an advancing blaze. With no time to extinguish the fire, I grabbed my dog and rushed outside just as the fire engulfed my house. Despite the quick response of the fire department, my house was reduced to ashes. In the aftermath, as I thanked Mrs. Parker for her life-saving call, a question formed in my mind. Mrs. Parker only had my old number. I asked her, and she confirmed that she had indeed dialed the old number. She had no knowledge of my number changes. Puzzled, I attempted to dial my old number. A recorded message played. The number you have dialed is not in service. How did Mrs. Parker's call reach me? All I know is that I am alive because I did, in fact, get that call. Next glitch. Last Tuesday, I was at work. You know, typical 9 to 5 boring desk job. And this day was particularly boring, full of endless spreadsheets. To lighten up my mood, I thought I'd text my girlfriend Zoe something funny 
We have this thing where we send each other ridiculous memes and jokes to help each other get through the day. As I was still looking for a meme, my phone vibrated with a new text notification. It was from Zoe. I looked at the notification, expecting a question or a meme, but the message was, ha ha, looks just like you, followed by a series of laughing emojis. I was confused. I hadn't sent her anything yet. I thought maybe she was replying to an older message, but the last thing I sent was early morning, and she had already responded. So I asked her, what are you talking about? And went on looking for a funny picture to send her. Her reply left me even more perplexed. The meme you just sent, so cute. But I hadn't sent any meme, not yet. As I was about to tap the notification to tell her this, I stumbled upon the perfect meme. A cat in a business suit looking just as bored as I was feeling. On a whim, I sent it to her without explaining the confusion. Her response was immediate. Hmm, it's the same one. When I asked her to screenshot what she had received, there was two identical memes. The cat in the suit. The timestamp on the first one was indeed from a few minutes before, exactly when she'd first responded. But I had found and sent the meme only moments ago. I don't know what happened that day. All I know is I received a response to a message that I had not sent yet. Next glitch. That day, I was riding my bike home from work on the same road I always take. As I got to an intersection, the light turned yellow, and I decided to keep going because there was not enough time to stop. But as I was entering the intersection, I saw a red sports car speeding towards me from the left side. The car was so bright and moving so fast that it was almost a blur. The driver didn't seem to notice that their light was red. They were headed straight for me. Everything seemed to slow down. I could see every detail of the car and the scared look on the driver's face. I knew they were going to hit me. I held my breath and braced for the crash. But then, nothing happened. Suddenly I was on the other side of the intersection and everything was normal. The red car was behind me, driving like nothing had happened. Since that day, things have been off. I keep feeling sad for no reason. It's like I miss something, but I don't know what. It's like I'm homesick, but I'm already home. My dog, who's usually happy and friendly, has been acting strange around me. So did I just imagine almost getting hit by a car? Or did something strange really happen? Next glitch. Hey, everyone. I have to share this because... It was just too bizarre. I'm a freshman in college, of course, buried under a pile of assignments and textbooks. The other night I was sitting at my desk working on a calculus assignment using my usual pen, a fancy Mont Blanc Meisterstuck that was a gift for my high school graduation. It's a bit of a status symbol, but I like it because it writes really smoothly. Out of the blue, in the middle of a particularly grueling problem, my pen vanished. It was just gone. One second it was in my hand, the next it was like it was never there at all. I didn't see it disappear, I was looking at my paper, but I definitely felt it. So naturally, I started looking around for it. I checked my desk, the floor, even the bookshelf next to me, but it was like it had just evaporated. As I was about to descend into full-blown panic mode, I heard a soft click. I looked up, and you're not going to believe it, but my pen was hovering above my head. It was just hanging there in mid-air, as if gravity had decided to take a break. In disbelief, I reached up to grab it, but the moment I touched it, it disappeared again. I stared at my empty hand like I'd never seen it before, my brain struggling to process what had just happened. The next sound I heard was a click from my desk. I looked down to find my pen sitting there, as if it hadn't just pulled a Houdini on me. I picked it up half expecting it to vanish again, but it stayed solid in my hand. Was I just super tired, or had I just experienced something that's not supposed to happen? I didn't know, but it sparked a strange kind of energy in me, 
I sat back down, my heart still pounding, and picked up the pen again. Suddenly, the calculus problems that were torturing me before seemed easier. Don't hesitate to share your thoughts on this, please. Next glitch. Hey all, the weirdest thing happened. And I seriously can't get it out of my mind. You guys know about glitches in the Matrix, right? Well, I think my family stumbled on one and it's completely freaky. A couple of weeks ago, we were having this family night and my dad pulled out these super old camcorder tapes from his childhood. We were all like, OMG, let's watch. Just wanting to see how goofy everyone looked back in the 80s. It's so wild to see my dad as a little kid playing soccer with his bros in our yard. Yes, I should have mentioned, we live in the same house he did when he was young. So in the middle of the tape, everything went crazy. My dad's like, wait, hold on, pause that. We all looked, and there's this blurry image of our garage. Our garage, you guys. Like the one my dad built only 10 years ago, but this video's from the 80s, so you see what the problem is? We all freaked out. Because, you know, WTF. We rewound the tape, watched it again and again, and it's definitely our garage. Only it's kind of blurry, and it's not in any other shots of the house. My little sister thought it was a ghost or something. My mom was just confused, and I was like, this is a legit glitch in the Matrix, isn't it? We spent the next few days trying to figure it out. My dad even called some of his old friends, and they were all like, dude, no way. We don't remember any garage. He looked through old photos, blueprints of the house, everything, but nothing. I told him, don't bother, you saw yourself, it wasn't in the other shots of the house on the tape. But I think he was trying to find a rational explanation because he was freaking out too much. I've been reading a lot of Glitch in the Matrix stories, so I know this is one. Thank you for listening and making it till the end. So yeah, those old episodes were a lot shorter, and I also trashed some stories that I wasn't sure why I picked in the first place. If you haven't done so already, hit that like button, and also the subscribe button. So many buttons. See you next time, friends. Be spontaneous. <laughs>